Good evening, and welcome to the 28th Wearable Art Show. I'm Schaefer, President of the Board of Directors of the Ketchikan Area Arts and Humanities Council, and tonight is going to be an absolutely fabulous show. With the theme of luminescence, we have lots of surprises and delights for you. The Wearable Art Show is one of the Arts Council's biggest events of the year, but we don't do it by ourselves. It takes over 120 artists and models and 200 volunteers to put it together. It is indeed a community effort. The first and biggest of all thank yous goes to you, the audience of the Wearable Art Show, and the members of the Arts Council for supporting great events like this one. Give yourselves a big round of applause. <laughs> Also, a big thank you to Wells Fargo for sponsoring the 28th Annual Wearable Art Show, since, and they've been a sponsor since 2009. The Wearable Art Show Committee, Ann, Jackie, Jenny, Ivy, Barb, Hunter, Terry, Layla, and Lauren, we couldn't do this without you. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> Please give a huge round of applause for Linda Millard and Kathy Bowling for this year's set design. It's, and then for Keith Smith and Kyle Quinn for the amazing lighting, which you will not know the half of until the show starts. And also for our liquid needs, we need to thank Dave at Newtown Liquor. John DeCherney and Specialty Imports for donating wine for the Wearable Art Show since the beginning. And also Fred at Bottled Water Express and Alaskan Brewing Company. Thanks to First City Players for donating their moving van and Elizabeth Nelson for her extraordinary guidance in helping the models make the most of moving in their wearable art. And as a board member, I want to recognize the staff of the Arts Council with whom this production would not be possible. Anita, Marnie, and Shelley, and of course Kathleen, who will be back tomorrow morning from a very important conference that um, she was able to go to. Yes. <laughs> and also, the biggest of thanks to all the artists and models who have spent, in some cases, a year putting together these extravagant works of art for your enjoyment. Now I want to give a warm welcome to our Masters of Ceremony for the evening, Claire Bartek and James White. Hi guys, thanks for such a warm welcome. We gotta welcome James, because this is actually not only his first wearable, but his first time in seeing, so he's really excited. Yay! We, we did a lot of thank yous, but we're gonna thank just a few more people before we get started, and that's Specialty Imports for all the donated wine, um, Alaska Brewing Company for the donated beer, uh, KML for the kegerators and keeping our beer cold. Newtown Liquor for going above and beyond. Bottled Water Express for the donated water. And obviously First City Players for donating the use of their moving truck, lighting equipment, and Elizabeth Nelson for her kind guidance for the models, which is much, much needed and awesome. All right, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm super nervous. I, I'm. I'm James White. Uh, this is my first wearable art show, which is quite an honor. And let me just say, after last night's nice dress rehearsal, I can totally see why there's quite the hype about such an awesome event. There are some truly remarkable numbers coming our way. I think our collective goal for this evening is to have something to talk about other than how mild the winter has been this year. <laughs> just a thought. But uh, we're in for quite a night. And with no further ado, I'd like to turn it back over to Claire to introduce our first group. So many of us lead busy lives and are pulled in several different directions at the same time. Similar to the chaos of traffic, the traffic in our life is filled with various elements of light, some bright and some dark, some to tell us to go or stop or warn us of danger. 
Whatever light is used to lead us through the traffic of daily life, we must get up and focus on the light at the end of the tunnel and always have faith that it isn't a train. All right, guys, let's hear it for Quad City DJs, Studio Max, and Alma Parker. Let's get it started. So talented. For the Fawn Mountain Wearable Arts Club, the stars have truly come out. Each artist has interpreted the word star and its many meanings in the sky, in Hollywood, in shape, and in light. With all these diverse looks, here is Starlight Style. Learning illuminates us all, and all these pieces from the students of the Ketchikan Charter School were inspired by things we study at home or school. These are ideas we love, and we love to dance, so there's that too.
Artists and students of the Tonga School of Arts and Sciences have taken the reflections of light from within a glacier in these pieces. Marveling at the colors that spring from water and sunshine, they call these collective works blue ice. Child that's everywhere and haters need not apply. Ideally don't mean replies. I'm feeling lucky today in factually every way. Creating signature moves, making my own headline news. I'm in it taking action, not just batting my lashes. And if it all comes crashing, I'll still come out dancing. Tell me I can't be. Welcome to the Year of the Horse, with our take on the traditional Chine tr Chinese dragon. Illuminated by lights and glowing paint, artists and models Faith, Lily, and Maggie have strung up a dancing, jolting dragon of a ride in Chinese Dragon. lives in what is easily Earth's most inhospitable habitat, the lonely, lightless depths of the ocean. A built-in rod arching from her head is tipped with a lure of luminous flesh. The intoxicating illumination amid the black waters is irresistible to her prey, drawn into her large, fang-like teeth and devoured whole. Artist Bianca Jerzak models her piece, Elysium.
Okay, guys, hold on to your seats and get ready because it's my pleasure to introduce for you the senior company dancers of the Ketchikan Theater Ballet under the direction of Jess Hoffman performing The Light Within. <laughs> Fabulous. All right, guys, Rhonda Green, the artist of these beautiful works, has asked us to imagine a beautiful scene in the woods where butterflies were transformed into mythical creatures created from the luminescent dust of a pixie. Watch out, they may be a little mischievous. Modeled by Kiara, Jahana, Kinsey, we see a metamorphosis. Thank you. 
Oh my goodness, they're so cute. I'd wear that every day if I was 10. So, what would you do with strings of a broken Christmas tree lights and a stack of green plastic grocery bags? For artist Lynn Jorgensen, the answer was Christmas tree dresses. Knitted strips of green bags, lights, ribbons, and ornaments complete these unique dresses. Models Megan and Sarah aren't dismayed by broken lights, for they are glowing from within. Miss Bianca Jerzak couldn't be with us this evening, so I'm going to give it up to my co-host, who's going to introduce our next lovely artist, the beautiful Madison Rose. Madison has created a dress made out of 1,000 spoons, straws, fabric, and a lot of glue to illuminate Spoontastic. I wish I was half as cool as Miss Madison. 
Our next artist was inspired by her childhood memories of her father's poetry and the sound of a typewriter. Julie and Campbell Rose have created a piece honoring the great authors whose works bring us beauty and a sense of belonging. With a nod to Hemingway and Fitzgerald and all the other greats who brought light to the world with a glass of wine and a vintage typewriter. This is Literary Luminous. Tonight, artist Tori Caro models her work, Dancing in Fire. She is representing... I agree. The power and movement of fire, illuminating with the light and energy that it has to offer. Fire is essential, and with fire around us, the possibilities are endless. I love it. Veteran wearable artist Ruby McHugh wears her outfit consisting of a giant glowing pinwheel, a sparkly dress, and a star hat in night sky. For the fans, yeah, from the stage to up in the stands, yeah, scream! Scream! So loud if you can stand it, that it takes it all around the planet. Sneakers squeaking insane, like a buzzer beater beating up a basketball game. I'm here doing it like picking up the mic, time is on my side, down And now, now, I'm just winding up hours to go. Oh, here in this club, so make some noise, noise. And hold your breath and let it out, let it out, let it out, DJ, what comes next? Blazing through me, fire and I'm burning. 
Following Ruby is Lauren and Riley McHugh, whose favorite things are fireworks. Chandelier dresses, big effects hats, plastic rods, paint, and sequins are lit to make this big bang of a show. Live. We're just going to start beatboxing when the music doesn't start. Yeah. yeah, don't say yeah until you hear it. <laughs> we get the hype in public relations and the use of nuclear power, followed by the results of accidents and aging. Inspired by the disaster of Fukushima, Japan, artist Susan Walsh presents us with recycled bridal dresses, paper mache, a hula hoop, and tea lights. Modeled by Jen McDonald and Britt Hinkle, Susan wants us to wake up. Sticking with the theme, are you ready for the Fukushima fallout? Whether it is nuclear, biological, or chemical, any futuristic apocalypse can be survived by wearing the Radaway right Advanced Arctic Blast Radiation Armor Suit. The marvel of engineering and design features multiple safety features and boasts attractive and dazzling adornment with functional LED accents. Models Spencer and Roger show Julie, Julie Steiner's fully accessorized survival suit an Arctic Blast 
right away. This place is going to be a raving discotheque before you know it. A suit of armor inspired this piece by Jill Mant and modeled by Becca Wachter. Jill wants to shed light on the importance of vaccinations and how they armor us against disease. March of the Vaccine Valkyries.
The Haida-like canoe with totem of otter, it is representative of Jessie's Haida roots and her childhood friend that she played with. The moon shining on the water, illuminating the bioluminescence on a starry night, is one of our first memories in Alaska. Thank you, United States Coast Guard Ketchikan, for helping again to make this possible. Jill Walker and Aspen Bauer want to light up a dragon? Quite a switch on what you think is normal. Using fabrics, paint, plastic bags, and sparkles, we see the Dragon Queen. Selena Parks and Maria Wojak have used aluminum, cloth, lace, and hot glue to present the Knights of Sugar Rush. Selena is inspired by her dad, who makes her want to work hard in dragon armor.
Charlene Luth models as a jellyfish princess going to the ball. Lots of plastic and lights show that sometimes inspiration by committee can work. Inspired by the male peacock's bold stance and feathered glory, Faith Duncan takes flight in cerulean blues, wild purple, and glow-in-the-dark embellishments. She's ready for a fight, perhaps. She tells us that art allows the introvert to become the extrovert for a few minutes. So, is it fight or flight? Marty Rickleman tells us that this is titled addiction for two reasons. One, collecting soda cans for many months comes from a lot of caffeine intake, all for the sake of art, of course. And two, it only took one year of experiencing wearable before she was hooked. Wearing aluminum soda cans and taffeta, Amanda Slevin models addiction.
Artist Carol Alley asks us to imagine being given a box full of old ties. Thank you, Barb Bailey. And a directive to make some wearable art. What might you come up with? Using those ties, some leftovers from previous wearables, and cheap jewelry, she has served up jelly on a plate. debate the effects of nature and nurture for human behavior, but this piece by Abby Sweetman celebrates the importance of both, using common materials to recreate the structure of biomolecules, the composition of life is explored, and under construction. enlists her senses to illuminate the environment, using her legs to smell inside cracks and crevices, and suction cups to taste a potential snack. The only drawback is her limited awareness of the movement of her legs. So, if you're brushed on the cheek and as she swims by, blame it on the proprioception, baby. Adrian O'Brien's legs.
hope you guys are all taking notes on these really long words because there will be a test at the end of this evening. These next pieces, designed by Megan Dial and modeled by Megan, Naomi, Maddie, and Josie, give us the creative interpretation of the four elements, bringing them into the new light with down to earth. To conclude our first act, Susan Heisler, Heisler, I got it, has taken a post-apocalyptic view of her basement, imagining a world where the light is beginning to fade and the temperature continues to drop. These surviving warriors, Sasha Southmate, Chris Pillsbury, and Alex McDonald, fight to illuminate the world once again in 2.2 degrees.
model Afton. Afton Lynch and Kyan Reeve model Tie It Up by artist Jan Jorgensen. Now it's a party. <laughs> Ivy Rose returns with inspiration from Octopi, Alice in Wonderland, and the observation that in our busy days, sometimes it would be nice to have more than two hands so we wouldn't go a little mad. Here's Mad Hatter with a twist. and Virginia Rajinsky were inspired to explore the connection between fires, heat, light, and the postmodern meaning of femininity in Southeast Alaska. No, not really. They were inspired by Weed Whacker Line and how cheap, plentiful, colorful, and easy it is to manipulate. Carrie Lundy models incandescence.
Iridescent stars and comets dance across the night sky filled with black holes and starry showers. A can-can that used 30 yards of black tulle holds the stars in the galaxy. A golden crown with gems, matching necklace, and earrings complete the ensemble. Here, modeled by Lee Woodward. I love those sparkly shoes, man. <laughs> According to act, act, artist Jackie Kaiser, over 10,000 hand-dyed zip ties went into these deep-sea bioluminescent creatures. Modeled by Corey and Nicole Embry, anemones, urchins do not usually normally glow, but they do look like they are made out of zip ties. And who knows, in some sci-fi future, we may all glow like tidal zone zip. Phosphorescence, or sea sparkle, is the phenomenon we see when bioluminescent living algae emits cold light when disturbed. The species, Noctiluca centilins, a single cellular round type, is the species that inspired this piece. Seeing your footprints glow on the tide flat, or the water explode with light when you dive in for a quick nighttime swim, 
With the phosphorescence is a magical experience. Barb Morgan models her coffee bags, or piece, titled Phosphorescence. Artist Susan Heisler brings you this magical duo of wearable art pieces, which were inspired by one of nature's enduring relationships. Models Jesse Minchel and Elizabeth Avila display the drama of the moth seeking out its love. The flickering candles in these pieces were created by fabrics, feathers, and bits and bobs she meticulously combined by candlelight, of course.
Inspired by Da Vinci's wings, dreams, and flying machines, artist and model Jeanette Sweetman gives us a nod to the minds of the Enlightenment in order to create something humanistic. Using deconstructed belts, military gear, old drawing homework, and hundreds of feet of stripped wire, this piece is a thoroughly recycled revival of once lost thoughts and materials. It's a trip into whimsy with this over-the-top garden of glitter on heels, a fresh frock covered in fabulous foliage, enjoy an eclectic mist of tissue, felt, and construction paper flowers growing out of a base of landscaping fabric and pipe insulation. Tiffany and Sherry Davis bring a fantasy of floral to life. Fashioned from expired but not used surgical tubing and implements, this fairy mask with tubular dress and wings will be there with you in the operating room. Diane Palmer presents Fairy Gwenifar.
In another look back at love, artist Therese Connolly tells us that her model, Mindy, might look like a space age girl, but inside all that glitter is a girl that's lit up by love. Girl, turn on that love light. Veteran artist Anne Freshly loves the few villainess of silent horror films, so much so that she brings us a reflective look at a shadow stalker in black and white, inspired by the early classics, transforming light into nightmares, glints in the shadow. These four models, Jessica Mills Clark, Victoria O'Brien, Lisa Pearson, and Leah Canfield, represent the four elements that combine their own electrical energy, chemical reactions, and physical shape to create flashes of light in artist Deb Watier's 
Vanessa and Jason Alderson's work, The Elements of Magic. This piece by Holly Knoyer is titled by the Moby song, Run On, that inspires her with lyrics that remind, we reap what we sow. My family and my family of friends have long inspired me and kept me on the level. And that, my friends, is illuminating.
Protuthis sorrentis, also known as the glowing sucker octopus, is one of the few octopi that is classified with bioluminescence. Its suckers, known as photophores, have evolved into light-emitting photo lures, which can flash on and off, attracting prey near enough to be seized by its tentacles. According to the artist and model Rhonda Green, don't get too close because you might become a handful. Artist Lauren McHugh took inspiration from the colors of pop art master Peter Max and love, which illuminates all. Mix those two with Lauren's imagination and you've got, well, you've got a revolution. love to thank you for joining us this evening and more thanks than we could ever put into words we'd like to thank the artists and models who have spent in some cases over a year putting together these extravagant works of art for your enjoyment thank you and let's see them all again
Don't even think about it. 